This video will cover the things you need to consider when deciding whether to use a VRF heat pump system versus a heat recovery system. We will cover the key items to consider when choosing one of these VRF systems. One of the main considerations and differences between the two systems is the ability to provide simultaneous heating and cooling. Let's first look at a VRF heat pump system. As you can see, the VRF heat pump system only allows you to have either heating or cooling in all zones fed from the same VRF outdoor unit. As you can see, there's three zones here. One, two, and three, and they're all in heating mode. And it's served, here's the piping going out to the outdoor unit, and they're all in heating mode. Here's the same three down here, all in cooling mode, because in a heat pump system, this outdoor unit, the same unit here, can only either be in cooling or in heating. You can't have heating and cooling at the same time with a VRF heat pump. With a VRF heat recovery system, you can have simultaneous heating and cooling. As you can see, this unit here is in cooling, the center zone is in heating, and the far right zone is in cooling. They all have a thermostat controlling their own fan coil unit but this branch selector box up here allows them to choose whether to be in the heating mode or cooling mode. You won't have a branch selector box with a heat pump system. And this additional box is like a traffic cop. It determines which way the refrigerant will flow. So instead of throwing the heat outdoors, out your outdoor unit, which is normally rejecting the heat during cooling, you'll have that heat being used for any zone requiring heating. Score on the first comparison between the two, simultaneous heating and cooling goes to VRF heat recovery system because a heat pump can't do simultaneous heating and cooling. So let's look at the next item of comparison. When comparing costs, the VRF heat recovery system is definitely the more expensive system. There's the additional cost of the branch selector box, the box that directs the flow of refrigerant based on the zone's demand for either heating or cooling. The selector box also requires new electrical service, so this adds to the electrician's cost. Depending on which VRF manufacturer you use, some of these selector boxes require a drain line, such as that by Mitsubishi. So you'll have to pipe the box to a drain. It produces condensate. You can use the VRF project cost database to track all your project costs. This spreadsheet is great for budgeting VRF projects or just keeping track of all the engineering parameters. And what you do is just put in the information on the project, the cost, the square footage, the tonnage, and it automatically calculates the cost per ton, cost per square foot, square foot per ton, cost per room or cost per fan coil. It keeps track of all your piping, sheet metal, equipment, controls, engineering, cost per square foot, all the parameters that are good and useful for when you have to do a budget or just to check a project to see how it's comparing to previous projects. So you can keep track of it. It keeps track of if it's a two pipe or three pipe, if you have branch selectors, how many, how many outdoor units, indoor units. Anyways, you can get that. Look at it for our website, vrfwizard.com. Okay, based on cost, the VRF heat recovery system is definitely more expensive. So this one goes to the VRF heat pump. One of the benefits of a VRF system over the traditional DX packaged or split system is that it runs on less energy because the variable speed compressor 
can ramp up or down with demand, which makes it more efficient than the on-off cycle of a standard compressor in a DX system. This allows the compressor to run at part load where it is more efficient. Also, the outdoor fan may have the option of also ramping up and down with demand. Between a heat pump and a heat recovery system, the heat recovery system can be more efficient. When a heat recovery system is balanced out according to its load profile, that is, you have cooling and heating simultaneously in similar amounts. A good balance is when heat absorbed from cooling matches the heat needed for zones in heating mode. Okay, as you can see, the zones are identified by these ovals, like this one is 1-7, and then the zone covers whatever the dotted line in this large X indicates. So here's 1-8, it's this room alone, this conference room. Now with these two zones here, if you were to use a heat pump, that means both the zones would have to be either in cooling mode together or heating mode together. They couldn't be like you could use a heat recovery. That means one could be in heating, let's say 17, let's say it's winter out and it's very cold. 17, the office, they can say, well, it's cold out, let's put the heater on. And the conference room could be full of people and the outside air, the cold outside air, is not the overriding factor. It's the quantity of people in the room. It's making it stuffy and hot, and they want cooling. Well, under a heat recovery system, you could have cooling in zone 1A, and you could have heating in 1.7 at the same time. But with a heat pump, you only get either cooling or heating. So the energy efficiency comes in is when you can balance loads. You could have just a same amount maybe of cooling zones as you do of heating zones. That way all the heat that's being rejected or absorbed on the cooling side can be used to heat the heating zone. So the heat recovery system is obviously more efficient when you have a balanced load. So they get the points for efficiency. The next comparison is piping lengths. Looking at the heat recovery on the top and the heat pump on the bottom, they're pretty similar. They each got two pipes going to each zone and two pipes going out to the outdoor unit. The problem comes when you need to have individual zones on the heat pump. So if you now look at the diagram for this heat pump layout where they each have a home run, then the piping lengths are much more greater on the heat pump system and hence will give the points to the heat recovery system for less piping but it all depends on the layout. Okay the next item is maintenance. Well with a VRF heat recovery system you have all those extra selector boxes and the electrical connections and all the piping connections on them and possibly the condensate drain. So it's a little more complicated, so you have more touch points. It's possible that the maintenance is going to be much higher on the heat recovery system unless you have a lot of home run single zone heat pumps. But we're going to give this one to heat pumps because of the extra selector box on the heat recovery system adds to the maintenance. Alright, the last thing we're going to look at here is the difficulty of installation and commissioning. Well, since the VRF heat recovery system has the branch selector box, multiple port boxes, it's a little more sophisticated system, so it's a little more difficult to install. You got that extra box. Um, so we're going to go with the VRF heat pump being the easier of the two to install and commission. Well with that the final score is three to three. I guess the point is you really have to analyze each job to see which system fits into the particulars of that job. The important things being you know zoning, how are the zones laid out, how is the exposure to the sun, how much south glass, north glass, all that has to be looked at and then cost. 
the cost to the owner, they just want to pay extra for a heat recovery system, energy efficiency, a little more efficient on the heat recovery side, pipe lengths, you need to look at the lengths, how the layout's going to look, and then think about the maintenance and the difficulty of installation and commissioning. If you like that video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.